So today we're going to go into a little bit of my family history and try to solve the mystery of these two 30-06 rounds. So to start off the story, my uncle has recently died and in planning for the funeral, we were trying to find photos of him, uh, not just recent photos, but photos of him going back a ways. And we started going through a number of bins and things that were um, family stuff from my grandparents. Now my grandparents had died um, back in the last 10 years and we had a bunch of their stuff that we were going through. And so we would kind of just go through there looking for any photos that had him. And in doing that, we came across this red ribbon cigar box, which had a bunch of letters in it here. Most of it looking like military stuff. And also having these two 30-06 rounds in it. Now, we knew that my grandfather had served in the military. He was there in... 1945 and 1946 it was after World War II but during that period that they can still still considered to be the uh, war period so he had gotten the um, World War II um, victory ribbon as soon as I pulled this out I knew exactly what it was because you know I've got a Garand and you know I deal with 30 out six cartridges a lot so I just recognized that thing as soon as I saw it now since we were looking for stuff about my uncle we kind of just set this aside but later on i was you know getting kind of curious about these and i wanted to see where they were made at where they were produced and so i took a little bit of ballastol just to clean some of the grime off of them and i was able to make out a little bit here on the head stamp that we've got usc company on the top and 17 on the bottom and we've got that on both of them now i'm like well 17 that must be a code for something and not a year because like 1917 I mean yeah they were making 30 out six back then but that's like way too early for my grandpa um, so I started doing a little bit of checking around on the internet and by checking around on the internet I mean asking on reddit but some people on reddit were able to tell me that yes this number on the bottom of the head stamp does definitely refer to a year so we had World War II service for my grandfather and World War I production 30-06 cartridges. Now this seems a little unusual. Now I know that we had a ton of 30-06 that was built up during the war because the war just kind of unexpectedly ending. We weren't really expecting uh, you know the German surrender there and so we had a ton of it left over that's part of the reason that they wanted to chamber the M1 Garand and 30-06 instead of the cartridge that John Garand had originally developed at the BN and I thought that maybe there was just a bunch of it that was in surplus and that uh, somehow it had found its way uh, to him at the end of World War II that seemed a little odd so we started going through all the papers that were in here and as we were reading it we started noticing that it wasn't my grandfather's name that was on it the last name was the same but the first name was Oscar which which was not his name now my grandfather is technically um, a step-grandfather um, he married my grandmother um, when my dad and my uncle were both really young basically raised them and he's pretty much their father and I, I've never thought of him anything different than a grandfather but his family wasn't around the area and we really didn't know all of them so we were trying to figure out who Oscar was and just going off of um, you know just things that people remembered and thought that he had a brother named Oscar and well okay he could have a brother named Oscar and maybe Oscar brought them back but that still doesn't explain why we would have 1917 30 out six cartridges and as we were going through here we were finding out that Oscar was riding back home to his mother Lucy and that it was in um, a different city than where we were um, used to them being from so we weren't sure what was going on with there one thing that was an issue was that a lot of the stuff we were finding in here were um, military mail that basically just had a stamp in the corner saying that it was military and it was good so it didn't get a postmark on it 
so it didn't have dates on it and we weren't finding dates on a lot of it right off the bat and so we were kind of confused by all of it trying to figure out we were just trying to figure out when that was and as we started going through it we finally found some correspondence in here that had Oscar writing back home from 1918 and 1919. And we were able to find out in here that he was with uh, E Company of the 111th Engineers. So we had a pretty good idea of that and the time frame now, but that still didn't make a whole lot of sense with my grandfather because he was born in 1927 and Oscar, if he was serving in 1918 would have had to have been born at least in 1900 so 27 years between Oscar and my grandfather seemed kind of unusual and so we found out that Oscar was actually my grandfather's father so my great-grandfather and the Lucy the mother that he was riding home to was his mother or my grandfather's grandmother and we didn't know that he had had military service in there um, or that it had been during World War I. So basically we found out that um, my great-grandfather actually served during World War I and that my grandfather served right at the tail end, technically after, but right at the end of World War II. So that was kind of neat to find out. And we've been going through the letters here trying to find out everything on there and we're finding a few things in there one thing is that you know 100 year old documents um, a lot of these in pencil or in you know different types of pen because you didn't necessarily have like you know ballpoints lying around um, a lot of those are hard to read after 100 years and also that the way that people use cursive 100 years ago it's kind of hard to read, um, especially when you get some people from rural areas that may have not been you know, the best um, schooled in writing. And I'm not saying that I'm like a millennial that can't read um, cursive, but it's just really difficult reading a lot of this. Um, but we can see that he was stationed over in France and talked about the trip over there and that you know, while it was crazy, he wouldn't have missed that for anything and uh, he thought he was going to like it over there and he apparently found his way back. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 30-06 cartridges here. We've got the two of these and I'm going to put some others down here with it um, just for you to look at. These are going to be modern rounds. This is a uh, reproduction M2 ball from PPU, a reproduction M2 ball from Cellier and Bellet, and this is a um, Monarch soft tip hunting round. And you can see the difference in all of these right here. And when I say difference, I mean basically just the color of the brass. They really don't look a whole lot different as far as what the cartridges actually look like. The 30-06 round really hasn't changed all that much in uh, over 100 years. And we're finding a lot of other random stuff in here. Um, we've got a pair of glasses who I'm not sure whose they really are. And maybe somebody else can identify what this actually is in here. I do not actually know um, what it is. It's just some red and blue pieces of cloth there. And there's also like what looks like some sand and tiny rocks in here that probably seem to come from somewhere over there. We've got some other stuff in here about um, his mother requesting to his captain once he was back here in the United States to have a few days off to go to um, his sister's graduation um, and just letters from the captain and her back and forth but it's mainly full of just a ton of like postcards and things that he um, sent back to his um, either sent back to his mother or brought back with him and it's just um, just a lot of really interesting stuff there to see what all types of stuff that we collect and bring back. As I said, a lot of this is really difficult to make out the writing on, so I can't necessarily um, tell exactly what all of it was. I may go ahead and scan a lot of these letters and put them up on Imgur and see if uh, anybody else can make out any of uh, the writing on it there and the words that I'm having trouble with.
So I was just trying to find some photos of my uncle and started finding a lot of stuff in here um, that we thought was about my grandfather that ended up being about my great grandfather instead. And I also ended up with uh, some nice family heirlooms here to hang on to because these are kind of cool to have 100 year old um, military rounds. So if you found this video interesting, you can give it a thumbs up and a like. You can also leave comments on there um, about anything you had to say about it or to answer any questions about things that I saw on it. And you can also subscribe to my channel to make sure that you catch all the videos that I post and not miss anything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and we'll see you next time.